Sony's PlayStation 5 has finally arrived. After seven long years of service, the PlayStation 4 is ready to hang up its control pad and take it easy, handing the digital baton over to the next generation of consoles. Ahead of its official release to the public, we were able to get one of the machines a little early to collate some thoughts on Sony's latest piece of equipment, the console. The PlayStation 5 console itself is ergonomically complicated. The largest consumer console ever brings a very tangible meaning to the phrase absolute unit with its irregular shaping. While I personally don't mind it, there's no arguing that after the visually unthreatening appearance of pretty much every other PlayStation console, the PS5 is a very love it or hate it piece of machinery. Bottom heavy with a pair of fins adorning the top if you choose to have it stood upright, the detachable base plate gives users the option of having it lay vertically or horizontally depending on their home layout. Like a lot of people, I have a TV cabinet that has my various consoles sitting flat beneath my television, and fitting the PS5 into this setup is much more of a headache than I was anticipating. Standing the PS5 vertically is easy enough with the screw that comes hidden inside the base plate, and it's pretty obvious this is the way Sony wants you to display the console, proud and visible in your living room. I found some issues with the base plate while trying to lay it horizontally though, since instead of using a screw it just sort of slips onto the side plate without any kind of audible indication of an attachment. Shifting it around to get it lined up perfectly as well is a huge nuisance with the plate dislodging itself almost immediately every time. The user experience. Once you do have the PlayStation 5 perfectly aligned in your gaming area, turning it on is about as pain-free as you can hope a new piece of technology to be. The quick start guide that comes with the console is easy to read and follow, and I'd estimate that from first turning it on to being ready to play takes no longer than 15 minutes. Indeed, the first time sign-in lets you transfer your old PS4 account details over to the PS5, so you can crack on downloading your games almost immediately. The next-gen moment kicks in when you consider the sheer power purring away under the hood of the PS5 and in its boot-up times. Let's run through a quick example. From a cold boot, i.e. the PlayStation is completely off, to being actually in a game of Spider-Man Mars Morales takes no longer than 45 seconds. 45 seconds. That's incredible. And it runs as quiet as a mouse. Owners of the PS4 won't soon forget how the thing often masked the sounds of games being played with its jet engine fans working overtime to dissipate the heat towards the end of the console's lifespan. No such problem here. In fact, the reason the PS5 is so dense is to accommodate the very sizeable cooling unit housed within its lumpy exterior. Whether everything will run smoothly and quietly as the years stretch on and developers begin to push the boundaries of what can be achieved with the technology remains to be seen, but for an out-of-the-box machine, I'm impressed. With all the mechanical bits squared away and jaws firmly picked up off the floor, we're presented with a new, witheringly sleek user interface. Does it look vaguely reminiscent of the PS4 UI? Yes. Does that matter? No, not really. It's familiar and it functions. Job done. Why change what isn't broken? One thing you will notice is that there are now two distinct categories, games and media. It's nice that Sony acknowledges the parts of its audience that use their home console as entertainment hubs these days too, and not just as straight up video game machines. Something that's not so impressive is the relatively meager storage space. The internal storage clocks in at just 667.2 gigabytes, despite being marketed as 825 gigabytes. When you consider that a fully updated version of Call of Duty Modern Warfare lumbers around at close to 200 gigabytes, there's going to be a lot of space-saving solutions being implemented and possibly the purchasing of additional extended storage devices. Still, there are some neat features to play around with, including the ability to hunt down specific game help videos directly from the console for a part of the game you're stuck on, which could eventually become the go-to way to seek these things out, negating the need to go to YouTube or Google for guides. The feature isn't yet fully established on our review units, but it will be useful useful for the people who feel inclined to use it. Presently, I only have access to two games on the PlayStation 5. Astro's Playroom, a cutesy platformer that comes preloaded on the console and is mostly just a parade ground to showcase the DualSense, and Spider-Man Mars Morales. That's it for now in the way of first party games. Because of the torrid year the world has endured with the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, a lot of third party launch titles have been pushed back, making Sony's initial slim pickings feel all the slimmer. Of course, there are the backwards compatible games which, if you're using your PlayStation account, will be available to download in your library, and many of them are getting free upgrades via Sony's Game Boost. Game Boost essentially automatically upgrades old games to run more smoothly on the PS5 with things like improved frame rates and faster load times. Then there's the PS Plus Collection for those with a continuing PS Plus subscription, which will also be available right out of the gate. As for what the two games I've got look like, they're pretty good I guess. Take note that I'm perhaps not best suited to judge the graphical fidelity of the PS5 at the minute as I'm still hobbling along on an old HD TV, and not one of the fancy 4K HDR models that really bring graphics in the latest video games to life. There is a notable improvement in clarity and sharpness, but it might be the most modest of visual jumps we've seen from console to console. 
Saying that, it is no doubt impressive to know that the PS5 is capable of ray tracing, including on games that are being upgraded to the PS5, HDR, 4K and 60fps resolution as standard, but I imagine a fair few customers will be slightly behind the curve on stumping up for the additional bits and pieces of tech needed to fully appreciate the majesty of this brave new console world. The DualSense Allow me to be dramatic for a moment and say that the DualSense is possibly the greatest controller I've ever had the pleasure of holding. Thanks to its haptic feedback and inbuilt microphone, it reaches the last bastion of tangible senses for video games. Touch. The PlayStation 5's greased up SSD, its 10.28 teraflops of power, and any other performance based stat you care to mention, for me, pale in comparison to the sheer gaming joy of the DualSense. I've been trying to think of ways to describe it, and the best simile I can come up with is that it's like surround sound for your hands, where you're able to feel each pinprick pulse of vibration around your palms. The haptic feedback is particularly excellent in Astro's Playroom, which gives a glimpse into the future of what might be possible. Everything from biting bumper fight back while aiming and shooting weapons, cascading weather effects like rain and hail pulsing sporadically through the grips, to the use of the microphone that couples the actions happening on screen to the implied ones you're feeling in your hands. It is truly next generational. While the possibilities with it are certainly exciting, it's the implementation that's going to be key, and somewhat the unknown factor. The way the DualSense looks does partially betray just how good it is. Similar to the PS5 console, I can imagine it having a love-hate relationship with consumers. A bulky middle, soft-touch buttons and flappy bumpers on a two-tone black and white palette make it look like it wouldn't go amiss on the USS Enterprise. Which is great if that's what you're into, but not really what blends into most living room interiors. But it is at least comfortable to hold, which, if we're being honest, is the only thing that really matters. The Verdict My time with the PlayStation 5 in the weeks before launch has been almost universally positive, minus some physical setup distractions. It's a big, bulky, divisive piece of kit to look at, there's no doubt there, but it harbours the svelte inner workings of technological pedigree. One foot in the present and one in the future, a bridge between worlds waiting to have its potential explored exactly as a new console should be. An intuitive user interface with rapid loading times and enough of a graphical step up to make you say, yes, those graphics are nice. Account for all of this in adding one of the best, if not the best, controllers we've seen in the DualSense, and there's no mistake that Sony are serious about making the PlayStation 5 your essential buy this year, maybe even this decade. The distinct lack of games to play at launch, again I've only played two but there will be more coming, is doubtless a mood killer, but one that will be remedied. Deciding whether you buy at launch or wait a few months until the titles start rolling in is par for the console course. The PS4 isn't in the business of retiring just yet, with Sony confirming that the console will be fully supported until 2022. But make no mistake that the PS5 is just getting started, and the next generation starts here.